Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We've got a little bit of a financial breakdown video for you today. I don't have a thrift haul, which I normally do on Sundays, but we're, we're ahead. We've been picking up some big thrifts of clothing and stuff and then kind of having it all prepared for, um, you know, releases to Poshmark and eBay. So I'm a little bit ahead on that. Don't have a haul for you. So I figured what might be fun for, you know, the number nerds out there like me is to kind of talk a little bit about 2024 so far and go through some of those numbers. This isn't really quite a uh, quarterly review recap video like I normally do. There will be one of those coming up as well that goes kind of into the more overall numbers. But I wanted to talk about specifically the breakdown between Poshmark and eBay because I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, what that breakdown is. Like, is most of my revenue from Poshmark? Is it mostly from eBay? You know, how does that kind of break down? And, and um, you know, which is more profitable? So basically, so far in 2024, I've taken the numbers from both and we'll run through Poshmark first, then we'll run through eBay. And then kind of just, I'll just give some thoughts on that. Uh, first, I will say this, a lot of these Poshmark numbers are definitely helped and boosted by using Posh Sidekick. And yes, I'm gonna plug them once again on this on this uh, channel because I do use Posh Sidekick. And it works out to about $42 a month. It's charged in US dollars, but about 42 a month in Canadian. So a little over a dollar a day. And you know, you think about that, it's gonna send out offers to likers and stuff automatically so you don't have to. So if you make like four sales in the run of a month that net you $10 each, you've got it paid for. So, you know, if you're just starting out, maybe it's not quite for you. Maybe you don't need it just yet, but I definitely recommend it for somebody who's, you know, putting up even a couple items a day. It's going to pay off. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get into some numbers here. I've got a note on my phone, so I will be looking down a little bit for this, but uh, just, uh, just a little bit of history on Poshmark itself, just before we get into these deep dive details. I've been on Poshmark for a year and a half since October 22nd, or October of 2022 rather. So I've sold in total 826 items for $16,750 earned after fees. So I take out my cost of goods, which I'm averaging at about $6.50 per item because I do sell mostly clothing and on Poshmark it would be mostly clothing for me. And uh, yeah, average price is probably about six fifty because I have a local thrift store that has an actual list price. And um, yeah, so I take that out. And in a year and a half, that means my net profit on Poshmark is somewhere around $11,380. Now, for a year and a half, that's not a lot of money. I get that. But keep in mind that first six months or so, really, you know, I wasn't listing a ton of stuff. I didn't have a lot of great items. It's really been this last year, I'd say, where things have, have picked up pretty significantly and we've ramped up uh, starting last June. You know, was listing every day, really ramping up from like, I think I had, I think around this time last year, I had somewhere around 300 total listings on eBay. And, you know, by the end of 2023, it was somewhere around 900. So definitely ramped up big time in 2023. Um, all right, so let's go ahead. We'll just get started with what has sold so far in 2024 on Poshmark. Sold 118 items, so it's around 40 items per month. So again, talking about Posh Sidekick and whether or not that's worth it, well, you really only need to sell maybe like four items a month at $10 profit a piece to pay for that. I'm selling about 40 a month on Poshmark. Uh, that means that uh, for, okay, yeah. So t so those <laughs> 118 items has equaled to about $2,700 in sales. So around $900 a month in sales. Earned after fees, about 1950, so around $640 a month, somewhere in that range. And uh, my net profit after backing up my cost of goods is around $395, $400 a month. So again, not huge, huge money by any means, but keep in mind that I'm on Poshmark Canada. Canada only has 39 million people, so that's less than the state of California. So, um, you know, we, 
there isn't nearly as much of a customer base here. So you're not going to have nearly as many sellers as somebody or buyers rather as somebody say in the U S who has, you know, like 400 million people to work with. All right. So again, about 120 items sold $2,700 and I'm earning net profit about 400 a month off of Poshmark. So far in 2024, that is. So let's go to eBay. Uh, on eBay, I've sold 172 items. Now, of course, you know, it's not just clothing on eBay. I do sell all my clothing there as well, but this is also gonna have lots of hard goods, video games, all the rest. 172 items for $5,363. So around $1,790 per month in sales. Earned after fees. Um, about $4,400, so around $1,470 per month, and my net profit is around $3,350. So it's around $1,115 a month net profit from eBay. So obviously, you know, $400 Poshmark, over $1,100 on eBay. I'm obviously earning and making more money on eBay. But again, a lot of that is selling video games and stuff. I have sold a decent amount of stuff out of my own personal collection this year, so it does skew the numbers just a little bit. But combined, that works out to just over $1,500 net profit per month. And so, you know, that obviously isn't a huge amount of money. That's not gonna pay all the bills and stuff like that. Uh, and if I was a full-time reseller and those were the numbers I was seeing, I would be a little bit concerned. But I think it's important to note, I only do this part-time. I have a full-time job that takes 40, 45 hours of my week. I do work from home, so I've got that convenience. Um, I don't have to worry about like commute time and stuff, so obviously I'm very grateful for that. Uh, that does make a huge difference in my life. But I've got my full-time job, and, um, and I do the reselling. I've only been tracking, I, I'm using an app, I forget what it's called, but I'm using an app that, you know, you can kind of put your jobs in and you can like, clock in and clock out, just kind of like record how much time you spend working at a job or something. And um, so for reselling, I do only spend about 10 to 15 hours a week. And I think that's kind of high for most weeks because I've been tracking since the beginning of um, March. And I've, I had one week where I put in like 16 hours but then there was one that was only like eight hours. And then last week was actually less than six hours because I barely had to process a lot of stuff. So when I get ahead like that, I might have a big week where I'm putting in a lot of time, but then it's smooth sailing. Just, you know, a little bit of time listing each day, packing some orders up every other day. So anyway, $1,500 in net profit per month is about what I've been doing so far this year. And I'm averaging I think this is a very conservative average of maybe 50, uh, 40 to 50 hours per month. It might even be less than that, but we'll just say 40 to 50 hours per month is what I'm actually putting into reselling. It's everything from sourcing to photographing, listing, taking things to my unit, packing orders, shipping orders, everything. So that works out to, you know, 30 to 3750 per hour in net profit. So, I mean, that, that is a pretty good wage. Um, obviously, I think that the trap a lot of people will, will think about or get into is, oh, okay, well, you know, if you're making 30 to 37.50 an hour in reselling, you know, why don't you quit your job and, and do this full time? Obviously, you know, you'd probably make more money in, in most cases. That's true, but you also need to think about like extra costs for scaling up and stuff. So like when you're scaling up, obviously it requires more effort. It requires, you know, maybe more storage. It requires maybe more, more of a lot of things. So there's more than just these numbers to consider when you're thinking about scaling up. Uh, personally, I have a job that I'm very happy with. Uh, it pays well. I get to work from home. It, I don't think it makes sense for me to, you know, scale up and become a full-time reseller and quit this job. Um, but obviously that's a decision that's going to be different for everybody. Um, but yeah, okay. Yes. So I will say that these numbers are just Poshmark and eBay. This doesn't include anything that I sell on Facebook marketplace, which isn't a ton of stuff, but it is going to be the occasional, um, mostly video game kind of stuff, you know, mostly like 
um, either video games out of my own personal collection or something to that effect or maybe like a bundle I've put together like a Wii and stuff. I have sold $845 worth of stuff on Facebook Marketplace so far this year. So, you know, that is decent for sure. I mean, I'm not going to complain about that in three months profit wise. Yeah, profit wise, that's another almost 700 bucks because I tend to have pretty high margins. So, I mean, you could factor that in, throw another probably 200 you know, two to 250 on this per month. So maybe my net profit per month from reselling is more like 1700 and not 1500. So that does boost those hourly net earnings as well. But in any case, I, I really wanted to just showcase uh, eBay and Poshmark because, you know, the, the Facebook deals are essentially, they'll happen when they can happen. And I don't live in a great area for sourcing video games or, you know, that's not an opportunity I have all the time. So I don't really want to use those numbers as uh, something that I use to create my expectations or budgets for what I think I should be doing reselling. But yeah, anyway, I just thought it would be fun today because, <laughs> you know, I'm a math guy. I'm a numbers guy. Literally, this is my, my actual full-time job, which is another reason why I enjoy it and wouldn't want to, uh, wouldn't want to, to leave that is I work with numbers all day and, you know, pricing things and doing all kinds of cool stuff like that. <laughs> cool stuff. So, um, but yeah, getting into the, uh, getting into the, the sales and the breakdown of, uh, eBay versus Poshmark, obviously it's clear that I make more money on eBay, but it's because then I'm also selling a lot to the U S I would say that my eBay sales are probably by dollar value, 75% to U S sellers and only 25% to Canadian sellers. And I think that's mostly because it's typically cheaper to ship to the U S than it is here in Canada. So for me at least, being out here in uh, rural western Nova Scotia where I don't have a lot of good third-party shipping options, don't have, you know, uh, just a lot of the same rates that you would get, even through Canada Post, if you're, you know, very central of the country, uh, you know, with lots of shipping hubs nearby, you're going to get better rates. Being out here where I am, it's going to just cost more, you know, the fuel surcharge, all the rest, the taxes on that. I pay 15% taxes. It's, it's obviously going to be more out here, but, um, yeah. So anyway, I guess the key takeaway for people here is, uh, if you are a reseller in Canada getting started, um, I would expect that, you know, if you get a variety of items, but mostly clothing, you're probably going to have around similar results. Don't be afraid of selling to the U S um, you know, I personally now use calculated shipping for everything where I'm putting in those weights and dimensions and things, putting those in my listings, buying my labels through eBay, and then I'm actually paying exactly what the buyer paid. They get a good, you know, commercial discount. Um, I pass that along to them and my shipping options on eBay. I've got to, you know, go in there and you can set it to, um, you know, pass along any savings on shipping to your buyer. That's, so that's what they see, that's what they pay. I like doing that because obviously that's gonna generate more sales. I don't need to make money off of the shipping if I'm you know, getting a good profit margin for the item itself. There are times in Canada on Canadian sales where I may still be able to save a little bit on the shipping because I could ship through UPS instead of Canada Post. Maybe I'll make a few dollars there. Sometimes I will do that if it's, you know, I'm going to make three or four extra dollars, but I've had to use two boxes and a whole bunch of packing materials because I'm making a big parcel or something like that. Uh, UPS would be technically an upgrade to Canada Post because their shipping times are uh, specified usually as a couple business days sooner than expedited parcel. So uh, there'd be no issue there in, in upgrading to UPS uh, and going through that carrier. And if you save a, few, a couple dollars, you know, <laughs> for your shipping supplies. Um, I don't see any problem with that, but yeah, anyway. All right. Before this gets too long and rambly, just wanted to put that out there. Let me know what you think down below. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video guys. Peace.